Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how I highlight and contour and my updated foundation routine. What better way to start 2020 than with a flawless foundation, highlight, and contour. So if you guys wanna see my updated routine and how I get all this spice going on here, uh, keep watching. All right guys, let's go ahead and get started. So my highlight and contour, it's not as heavy as it once was, but it's still pretty glam. So we're gonna be doing quite a few layers. So the first thing I like to do is I just take a paper towel or whatever I have, and I kind of just press into my skin to make sure I don't have any excess skincare. Remember, I have already done my daytime skincare routine before this. So we're just pressing and making sure we don't have any excess product. That way our foundation and everything we're about to put on our face will not slide around. So we're gonna start off with primer and we're gonna start with this one. I'm actually gonna use two, but one's more of a skin bomb, we'll call it. This is an actual primer and I recommend this Rimmel Stay Matte Primer for all skin types. I'm normal to dry and most, most of the time when we're normal to dry, we kind of steer away from anything mattifying, but trust me on this one, it hides pores, hides fine, line, fine lines. It's seriously, you guys already know, it's been my ride or die. So what I like to do with this one is I will take the smallest amount, that's literally all we need, and I'm gonna focus this one right in the center of my face and I'm gonna blend out from there. We're gonna use another primer on the outer perimeter, but for right now, right through the center, I'm gonna put it through here. If you're oily, I would just do this one, but if you're normal to dry, I'm gonna recommend the other one that we're gonna use. I'm not gonna worry about that underneath my eyes, just right through the center. Like I said, you don't have to do this step, and if you are oily or combination, I would skip this step, but if you're normal to dry, adding this on the outer perimeter of your face and your cheekbones is magic underneath your makeup. So this is the Bobbi Brown Vitamin Enriched Face Base, all in one primer and moisturizer. Seriously magic in a jar. I forgot how amazing it was. I think I bought it for my mom years ago for Christmas and I didn't even use it because it was so pricey and I wanted her to have it. So I'm so happy that I've gotten to use it again. So I'm gonna apply it with this Anissa All Over Care. Oh, sorry, this is the Angled Care. The Angled Care brush. So I'm just gonna apply this on the high points of my face, a little through here, but I kind of focus it on the high points. We can put some here where I have my little forehead fine lines. Just kind of make sure they're nice and hydrated. And then right there is good. And I also like to focus it right on the apples of my cheeks. Now we're going to let all of these primers sink in for two minutes. I know that sounds outrageous, but they really need to sink in and do their job. And if I was just to apply foundation on it right now, it could be patchy, it could just start to peel, it would be a hot mess. So let your primer sink in for two minutes minutes. So now that our primer has had time to really sink in and warm up in the skin and really absorb, we are going to go in with my favorite foundation at the moment. Mm -hmm. It's spicy. It's so, so good. I would have never tried this in a million years. This is the Givenchy Tint Couture Everywhere. I wear the shade P110. I can also wear the shade P200. It's a little too dark for me right now. And P stands for pink, and you guys need to remember that I am neutral to pink in my undertones. I have a video on how to find your undertone as well, which I will link below. In the meantime, I'm gonna use the shade P110. And what I'm always doing with my foundation, and this is the key to have it just melt into the skin, is to put it on the back of your hand and the reason I just put it on the back of my hand instead of on my face is we would be using way too much and you'd be surprised how little you're going to use if you put it on the back of your hand. If I was just to go right in, I would have to work all of that into my skin. But I'm not going to have to because I have it here and I can kind of just go in and grab what I need and assess the situation of my skin and my redness and any kind of blemish that I might have that day. So I never recommend just going directly on your face because a lot of you are like, well, why don't you just put it on your face to warm it up? You're gonna use less. And that is honestly the key for flawless base, highlight, and contour. So let this warm up on the back of your hand for about 40 seconds. I feel like that should be enough. A minute would be better but I feel like I'm giving you guys a lot of time constraints. So I would say 40 seconds and we will start to work this in. So I grabbed my Anissa Pinnacle Foundation Brush, my favorite, 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 
favorite foundation brush. And I kind of just go over the back of my hand. And this even helps just to warm it up a little bit further. And once I have it kind of evenly coated on my brush, I always start on my cheeks. And I just continue to kind of dab it in. And I work in very small sections. Notice that I haven't went like this. I haven't went like this. I'm just tapping and working in really small, small sections. And the reason I start on my cheek is because that's normally where we need the most coverage. And that's also where your face can hold the most product. It's not gonna slide around on your cheeks. Now the place that it does slide around most on most people is on your nose, on your chin and your forehead, which is really thin skin and your foundation really can't hold onto it. And that's also a reason we crease underneath our eyes because it's also very thin skin. Don't forget your ears. And if you notice, I'm still working kind of in the same place just to continue to tap this in. And if you'll notice, I haven't even went back and picked up any more foundation. It's just really about evenly coating your brush and taking your time to tap it in. Now I'm gonna look into a mirror because I'm just doing this in my monitor, kind of see if we're missing anything. Gosh, this foundation is skin, but better. It's so, so beautiful. And then I'll just take kind of whatever's left on my brush and then just kind of tap it into my forehead. The forehead is where I put the least amount of product. It is the first place that starts to look cakey. We will come back in and go closer around the brows and through here with a smaller brush. But for right now, you can see that. And I'm gonna go ahead and do this side off of camera, but you can see such a difference. Now I'm just gonna pick up the smallest amount of foundation that's left on the back of my hand and I'm gonna bring it right through the center of my forehead. This is an Anissa Angle Concealer Brush. Can't live without this one either. And then now we can just kind of go around the brows underneath here. And I will even take this right, I'll kind of turn it to the side like this and take it right through here. That's just gonna melt everything together. Make sure that our eyeshadow base isn't peeking through and it's even just gonna melt it into the eyeshadow. That way it doesn't look like we're gonna be eyes, cheeks, lips. We're all kind of blended and melted. I'll take it through here. Remember, I have the smallest amount of foundation on here. Just enough to add a little bit of color and blend. And also remember, we did not put any foundation underneath our eyes. Such thin skin there, guys. It's so thin that it cannot hold a lot of product. So let's avoid putting foundation there because we're still gonna be putting concealer there. Now I'm gonna grab the greatest sponge in the tri-state area. <laughs> this is my LT Cosmetics The Velvet Sponge, code ROSE for a discount on this as well. And I have it damp. I have it just damp with water, nothing special. And I'm just gonna go over everything and make sure that it's nice and seamless and this will even pick up any excess product. I know that we feel like we just need to load up on foundation. I know that some of you are going, well, Rose, you don't even have blemishes. It's still better to come back later and correct everything with concealer than it is to just load on foundation. So what I like to say is just let the concealer do the heavy lifting and all of the, take the heavy load from you. But for right now, we have this on and we are gonna find our concealer in this chaos. It's concealer time, and I'm just gonna use my favorites. I was thinking I was gonna use another one, but I know that my Kylie concealer is tried and true. I've been using it now for two years, and there's other concealers that I like, but this one I just love. So I'm gonna start with the shade Gypsum, which is actually my highlight shade and my concealer shade. It's gonna be one to two shades lighter than my actual foundation color. So I'm just gonna kind of pop it right through there and a little through there. I'm not gonna worry about perfect placement because we'll use a brush first. So we'll just throw this on and I kind of go in heavier with gypsum. I'm gonna show you how I use Himalaya in just a second. So we're gonna put a little down the nose. I'm not a big nose highlighter. I actually don't really contour my nose much. It's just not my vibe. And I like to highlight there, right there, and the center of my forehead. 
So that's where we're going to add light and bring light to the face, which is the highlight part. Now I know a lot of you are thinking, well, why are you not just using a really bright white concealer? You know, it's still gonna cast shadows. It's still not going to be the perfect color. Once you find the perfect color of concealer, highlighting and contouring becomes so different. It's not that bright white that we were used to a couple years ago, but this is still gonna bring so much life and so much light to the face, even though it's not a super bright concealer. And then I'm also gonna add Himalaya, which you're gonna go, whoa, well, that's gonna defeat everything and all of the highlight purposes but it's not. Himalaya is my color corrector and if you cancel out shadows, your face is going to look so smooth and so flawless without doing that super white triangle underneath their eyes and then the brown bronzer helmet. It was cute, but we're going into 2020. We're trying things out and we're doing it different. So what I like to do is I'm just gonna tap on just that much of Himalaya and these two are gonna mix together and it's going to be the most amazing color correction without having to heavily color correct that you have ever seen. And a lot of you, even fair skin tones, have been saying that you are, have been able to use this one as a color corrector. Now, if you notice, that's all we're going to use of it. So I use Himalaya as a cheating color corrector. Now, the next step, I take my angle concealer brush from Anissa Beauty again, and I just kind of tap it where I want it. I don't worry about blending it in, we're still gonna go over it with the blender, but I kind of just place it, see where the light's gonna hit, clean up underneath my shadow here. I mean, you can already see such a major difference. I'm also not gonna take it up too close to the lash line because honestly, we're gonna cover that with eyeshadow, so always factor that in. The least amount that you can put underneath your eye and towards your lash line, the better. That way it won't crease or start to slide and move. And you can already see that shadow with Himalaya on it is gone. And then we'll just kind of work this in here and down the nose, through here, and then of course the forehead. Now that we have the concealer placed where we want it, we're just gonna go over it again with our LT sponge. This is gonna pick up any excess and just make sure that it's nice and tapped in, perfectly melted, and then of course, this is one of the reasons I love this sponge. It fits in here so beautifully. And just go right underneath the eye. And you can just see so much lift and so much light, and the shadows are canceled, and once we put on our powder, you're going to see them disappear even more and you're going to be like, why were we ever using white concealer? Especially for day-to-day -day wear. Now, if we were doing a music video, any kind of film, the heavy highlight contour looks amazing. But for day-to-day, -day, but you're still wanting to be glam, this is it. I won't say this is natural by any means. Good Lord, Rose ain't playing that. Good night in heaven. However, I do wear this to the grocery store. But this one is going to look so much better in person. And we're not gonna be using any gray tones for the contour. It's just kind of an updated version of what we were doing a couple years ago. So this is the difference between setting your under eye. Look at that. That is wild. And then this one is not set. Now this is my magic weapon. Yeah, you're thinking, what in the Sam? This is magic. I actually learned this trick from Laura Mercier herself. You grab this sponge, which is from Laura Mercier. I'm telling you, I'm like, even I was like, why are we doing this? Why are we going back to a puff? Because it's magic. So what I do is I mix these two together. This is the Laura Mercier Secret Brightening Powder, shade number one. And then I use my Kylie Soft Pink Powder. I love the soft pink because it's gonna to continue to cancel out shadows and I just love that. I like to be effective, but with colors, not a lot of product. So I like to cancel things out with colors and not just pile on product. I hope that makes sense. So I'm gonna grab just a little smidge smidge of the soft pink. I'm gonna put it on the back of my hand, just like so. I'm gonna grab a little smidgy smidge of the Secret Brightening. I'm going to mix these two together. I have it mixed up in a thing, but I wanted to show you the containers themselves in this video. So it's perfectly mixed right there. 
what I'm gonna do is just in case, because I've been chatting here, I'm just gonna go back in with my sponge, make sure that everything's tapped in and we're not setting creases. Perfect. I'm gonna grab this, I'm kinda squeezing it together and I'm just gonna press. If you notice, we're not baking, we're not heavy. And I'm just gonna go ahead and set the sides of my nose. Now this is the only place we're gonna be setting for right now. Remember, just our under eyes for right now. We'll just go ahead and extend it out this way as well. And I'm just gonna continue to press. I'm gonna pick up just a little bit more. Look up and I'm just press, press, pressing. You're gonna get such a smoother, more set finish with this. And it's just gonna make your under eye look flawless. Look at that. Mm, it just gets me every single time. So ever since I found this, this is the Charlotte Tilbury Contour Wand in the shade Fair to Medium. Magic. It's a magic wand is what it is. So we're just going to tap this right above my natural hollow. When I turn to the side, you can kind of see it right there. And then we'll just put some right here. And then of course the jawline. Remember, we did not set anywhere else but underneath our eyes. I like to hit a little there. And then this is literally me contouring my nose. This is the smallest amount because I'll take whatever's left on this brush and kind of go around my nose and bronze it up a little. Seriously though, this was in my 2019 favorites. It's magic. So I already did a rough blend over here. We're gonna blend it in a little bit more a little bit underneath the neck, but I wanted to sh uh, show you guys how it blends out over here. This is an hourglass kabuki brush. You do not need this very expensive brush. I just happened to have it. I was blessed with it. Thank you, hourglass. But if you use any um, kabuki brush, you kind of see the shape here. This is all we're after. I'm sure I could find another one, but this one is just working for me right now, and I already have it. But most of us have a kabuki brush. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull this down my neck and then I'm gonna turn the brush and kind of tap. I'm always tapping. We're gonna tap it up into my hairline. And I'm just gonna bring kind of whatever's on the brush and just kind of swoop it underneath my cheekbone right here. Then I'm gonna continue tapping, tapping it into my hairline. And then we'll grab our sponge in just a second and go back over it. But right now I'm just kind of placing it and working it in. This really brings out the brightness in our concealer and just adds dimension, but without looking like we're orange and not spicy. And then I take whatever's left on my brush and I just kind of go down the sides of my nose. I don't get wild with this. I'm not a big nose contour person, I never have been. So I'll do that and then even if it feels too aggressive, I'll just go back over it with my sponge. I don't have anything on the sponge, just whatever was left from earlier. And then we'll just go ahead and go over the rest of the face and make sure that this is nice and blended and it didn't come down too far. But then I'm gonna go back over it because I don't want it to be too drastic of separation from here and here. Now I'm gonna grab my LT setting powder in the shade medium. I kind of just swirl these all together and we'll just start to set the bronzer and the rest of the face. Again, please notice that I'm tapping this powder in. You're gonna use so much less. And with this tapping motion, you're gonna be able to work it into the skin better and it's gonna leave you with a more skin-like finish. I'm just gonna go over my eyebrows just a touch and then I always have my spoolie here and I'll just kind of brush them back up. But it's just almost impossible to hit that skin right through there. So I like to set it. There we go. And then again, a little bit more, and then just down the nose and down the center of the face. This is my favorite powder brush, too. It's also from Anissa, and I just feel like it presses powder in so beautifully. So we're gonna add a little bit more bronzer for some more depth and some blush, and we're almost done. I'm gonna grab one of my favorite blushes. This is Kitten Baby from Kylie, and I'm using a Smith 133. Um, what I like to do is I like to smile, but normally you would kind of cup it here, but I like to put it on top 
of the apple of my cheek kind of right underneath my eye. I just feel like this is a really fresh way to wear blush right now. And I love the lift that it adds to the face. And then whatever's left on the brush, I'll just kind of pull this way, but not too far. I really like to focus it right through here. I am gonna dust I'll just, a, just a whisper on my nose and on my chin and right through here. Let me go find my other bronzer and then we'll add a little bit more dimension and we're almost done. Don't forget that no matter what, even if I overdo it or I don't overdo it, I kind of go back over everything with my blender. Each step I'm doing, I kind of work it back into the skin. Remember, this is damp, but not wet. Too wet and it's gonna make your foundation feel. You kind of, what I like to do is I'll run it under water, I will wring it out like a maniac, and then I will put it in a towel and I'll just kind of squeeze the water out of it. And that's the best way to get the perfect amount of moisture in it to where it'll, it will still do its job, but it's not going to separate your makeup. All right, guys, we're starting to finish up everything. I love this bronzer. I've recently gotten into it. It's the Rimmel Natural Bronzer in 021 Sunlight. It's just so beautiful. And the reason I'm gonna add a bronzer on top of this is for more dimension, and this is a contour video. So I wanna show you a little bit more of depth. I feel like this adds more dimension to my face when I use two. Notice that I'm still tapping. You're actually gonna have more control when you tap as well. So tap that in, and then notice I haven't picked up any more. Whatever's kinda of left on the brush, I'm gonna take through here, and I'll kinda of take through my hairline. I'm gonna pick up just a little bit more and just dust it on my jawline. I'm even gonna dust it on my ears, just make sure everything's nice and even. And then of course, the sides of the nose and underneath the nose. And I just love the depth. Look at that, it looks like we're bronzed and we're contoured, but we're still, you know, kind of natural. We're natural glam, mm -hmm. we'll call it that. Okay, let's add some glow and we'll be done. Last step, I'm going to use this. This is the Givenchy Healthy Glow Powder in 2.5 Natural Rose. It is one of the most gorgeous face glows. This is not a highlighter. I repeat, not a highlighter. I'm gonna call it a healthy powder because what it does is it's gonna add life back into the face but it's not gonna leave that strip of highlighter. It's not gonna leave a bruise. You're gonna look glowing and alive from every angle. Now, what I will say is I'm kind of not into putting it through the center of my face. I'm not into highlighting my nose. I'm not into highlighting my Cupid's bow and through here. I was finding that it was just like a little too sweaty on me. I was just a little sweaty, a little perspiring a little bit. So I haven't been doing it and I haven't been doing it on my chin, but where I will put it is I love to just kind of put it right through here. Just right through there, and you kind of can't overdo it. It just never looks out of control. It just looks like glowing, glowing from within, healthy skin. It looks like right when I get finished with my skincare, that's what I'm looking for. So I believe that this is still available. I saw it on the Givenchy website, but if you guys can find it, get it. It's magic, absolute magic. Now I'm gonna go ahead and finish my eyeshadow underneath my eyes and my lipstick off camera, and we'll be right back. All right, guys, we're all finished. This is how I highlight and contour. I know you're thinking, where's the white? Where's the brown? That is such a lovely technique, but I feel that in 2020, I wanted to update it and just show you a more wearable way to highlight and contour. I'm also trying to get back into teaching, plus I'm trying to show you guys more of my life, more of my animals. The next video I'm gonna film for you guys is my lighting setup, and I know y'all are excited for that. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Please subscribe, please thumbs up. Make sure that you find me on Instagram where I do daily tutorials. Yes, you heard that right. I do a tutorial every single day on my story, and I'm just real chatty with you guys. I love you all so much. I answer DMs, I just love y'all. I have to, I can't help it. So I hope y'all enjoyed this, and I love y'all. See you in the next video.